In today's video, I'm going to show you how to wire a combination switch and GFCI outlet. This is a very unique device that might come into play if you have an older home with no outlet in your bathroom. This could be an easy solution for you and I'm going to show you how to install it coming up. Now one of the solutions in the past has been you can just get a light fixture that has an outlet built into it. There's two problems with that. The first is that, of course, the light has to be on in order for the outlet to be on. You can see it there. The green lights are on now and they're off. So that's a switched outlet because this entire thing is controlled by this switch. The second issue is that that's not a GFCI protected outlet, which means it's a shock hazard because you're in a bathroom situation. Whatever you plug in there comes in contact with water, you could get electrocuted. The better approach is either to put an outlet right here by the switch. You can get a switch and outlet combination for here, or potentially run another box and run a wire from the switch to that other box, or potentially convert this to a double box and that way you can have the switch and an outlet right next to it. But it all starts with opening up this switch to see how it's wired. All right, with the power still on, I very carefully opened up this switch just to see what we have here. And as you can see, there are two black wires connected to the switch. And that's a good thing. The way that this works, I use a non-contact voltage tester and I'm just gonna test which one of these screws is hot. Not that one, it is the top one. Okay, the top one is hot while the light is off. That means that is what's called the line. That's where power comes into this box. And then this one here, since there's no power on that, I can surmise that when I turn the switch on, that gets hot, which means that bottom wire goes to the light up there. In the back of the box, I can see I have white wires, but they are attached together. Now that white wire is a neutral. So what this means is power comes into this box and then goes towards that light up there. All right, in this scenario, I can put an outlet either with this switch or I can add a box with an outlet or I can go with a double box, turn this into a double and put an outlet here. That's because I have two things. I have the line, which is a constant hot, and I also have a good neutral. Those are needed for us to put an outlet. Now, if you open up your switch and all you see is a white and a black wire connected to the switch, well, that white wire is really not a neutral. And how do I know that? Well, because they're both connected to the switch. And remember, when the switch is on, they get connected, which means this one is either the line or the load, the load going to the light. Either way, this is not a neutral. And the good practice is to put black tape on here to, to indicate that it's a hot wire, it is not a neutral. But if you've got a scenario like this, this is just called a switch loop. And in that case, power is up here, your, your line comes into the light and goes down to this switch. It doesn't have a neutral in the switch box. If there's no neutral, you can't put an outlet there. Let's say yours is wired like this and you do have a neutral in the switch box. The easiest solution here is to put a switch outlet combination where there's a switch on top and there's an outlet on the bottom. Unfortunately, because you're in a bathroom situation here, you can't just install a regular switch outlet combo. You need to provide shock protection and that's called GFCI. You may have seen outlets like this that have a test button and a reset button. Those are needed by code because if something water something comes in contact to water it will cut off the power and prevent somebody from getting shocked and so that's necessary in wet locations like bathrooms or kitchens or basements or garages or especially outside too but they make a special device that has a switch and an outlet in it and this is really intended for older homes so I'm going to show you how to wire this switch and GFCI outlet combo. All right, with the power turned off, I just simply remove this switch from the, the wires. And remember, that top wire is the line. This is the one that's hot all the time. And this is the one that goes to the light. So let's take a closer look at this device. So this is a switch up the top, and down the bottom there is an outlet. So this is a combination device. And you can tell this is a GFCI protected outlet because it has a test button 
and a reset button. And this one also has a little light down here to show when the power is on. If for some reason the power trips, this light goes out. Now on the back here, there are two screws and you can see it's labeled line. On the one side is a silver screw. That's where the white wire will connect. That's the neutral. And the other one is a brass screw and that's going to be for the hot. Now these two wires are the ones that come from the switch. Now the first thing I'm going to tackle here, I'm going to connect the ground wire. Now the grounds all get connected under one wire connector. This is a Wago connector, but you can also use a wire nut. They're all connected and then this pigtail comes out and that's what I'm going to connect to this device. And you always have to use a pigtail when you're dealing with multiple ground wires because by code you have to have a continuous ground all the time even if I disconnect a device. So that's why they do that. So this is good and tight on there. And that's the first thing I always do. And then I can push the ground wires back in the box. Now the next thing I'm going to deal with is going to be these neutrals. Now I can remove this Wago connector from these neutrals and I'm going to put them on this device. Since this is a back wire situation, there's actually room for two wires to be connected there. Okay, so I have my two neutrals connected under the silver screw and now I've got the hot side is to be connected next. Now the hot side is going to always get the line which comes into this device, right, or comes into this box, which is this one right here. Now in addition, I'm also going to put one of these wires, these are stranded wires, so I'm going to twist the strands, and I'm going to put one of them underneath here. And it doesn't matter which one, because they're both black. They're both going under there, and I'm going to tighten that down. Now, this wire is going to be hot when the switch is turned on power will come down this little wire and come out this little wire when the switch turns on. So these two have to be connected and for that I'm just going to use a Wago connector. Okay before I give this a test let's just do a quick review here. I've got the bare copper wire, that's the ground, gets connected to that green screw down the bottom. The two white wires are connected to the silver screw in the back. And then on this side this is the hot and that's what comes in here, that's the line. So that gets connected to the switch, and when the switch is on, it comes up here, goes to the light. And that's what completes the circuit and should turn the light on. So let's turn the power back on and see if it works. All right, with the power back on, let's test the switch. And sure enough, when I turn it on, power comes to the light. So I notice the light is out here on this outlet. And that's because it initially is tripped and I need to push this in. And there you can see it's a green light that shows you that this has power. And I can double check that. With this you can see two green lights. That means this is wired correctly. It has a good neutral and a good ground. And if I press the test, it goes off. And notice, even if this trips, it doesn't turn the light off. The light is controlled separately. Now one thing I will tell you is that this device is a specialty device. It's easy for you, but it comes at a cost. That cost me about $40 for that device. It is going to be much cheaper if you wanted to run a separate outlet. Take for example, put one over here and wire it from the original switch. I will put a link to a video down in the video description that shows you how to do that wire an outlet from a switch. But in a bathroom situation, you have to use a GFCI outlet. Make sure it's a GFCI outlet if you're going to add one in a bathroom. Now, the same thing is true whether you wire it through a separate box or you decide to change this into a double box. The wiring of the outlet to the switch is the same. So that video link will work in both scenarios. If you have any questions about that, please leave me a comment below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid.